Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Chris Wisher, President of the Eastern District. And with me from staff tonight is Lyle Hegemeyer, who serves as our uh, Discipleship Development Coordinator for the district. He's also DCE at Faith in Penfield. I'm delighted that you're with us tonight. And a special thank you to you for, uh, for your willingness to be a delegate at the convention this year. Uh, this is a 50-minute presentation, although I think it's going to be less than that, to be honest with you. So we'll be under under an hour very easily for you, so we'll get you on your way. Uh, tonight, as you are watching and listening to what I have to say about the circuits and reconfiguration, if you have any questions, uh, I would ask that you would put those in the chat. Uh, Lyle's going to keep track of those uh, for us. And then at the end, for those who wish to stay on, uh, I'm going to look over those questions and you know, try to answer them as best as I'm able to do that. Uh, at the beginning, we we took your we turned your video off. Uh, that kind of helps us on you know on our bandwidth so that we can communicate easier. And also, I believe you were muted automatically too when you came on board. So if you if you can keep your camera off, that would help the bandwidth. Uh, but hopefully, with the camera off, you can still see the slides that I prepared for tonight. And if you wish to speak, if you you know if you really feel the need to do it at a particular point. Uh, don't, don't hesitate, just unmute yourself and, and just go ahead. But otherwise, if you can keep your questions to the end, uh, that would be great. So this is an unusual, uh, in a very good sense, a very unusual convention because, well, lo and behold, it happens to be our, our 100th convention of the Eastern District. And people have asked me, you know, how, how can this be? Uh, you know, if we had conventions every three years, that would make this district 300 years old, which it isn't. This district is around 160 years old, but believe it or not, for a long time we had a convention every single year uh, in 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 the Missouri Synod and in this district, except when there was a national or synodical convention, then it was skipped. And the best as I could tell, in some of my my history reading, that all changed uh, not too long ago. It would have been in around the 70s or early 80s. Uh, of the last century when we went to the current cycle of three years. So anyway, a little bit of trivia for you uh, as delegates of the 100th Convention of the Eastern District. Uh, please join with me in prayer. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love and mercy which you pour freely upon us uh, in the face of Jesus Christ. You have called us to be people of promise, people bold who are witnesses, people who are in mission for you. Uh, help us, our churches, our pastors, all church leaders, uh, to be those who are missionary people, who have that evangelical uh, thrust about us. We want to share that good news with Jesus in our communities. Uh, be with us tonight. We thank you for these delegates. Bless them, bless their efforts, and bless their ears as they listen to tonight's presentation for our district. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So here's the deal. Uh, in case you didn't know, the convention date is set and the site is also set. Uh, this year, it will be on Friday and Saturday, June 17th to the 18th. And I'm going to say a, a lot more about, about that at our uh, future gatherings. But for tonight, just to let you know about that date, it's fixed and ready to go. We begin at approximately 10 o'clock in the morning. That's when the, the gavel begins and we start our convention on Friday. Uh, we have registration, though, begins at 8 o'clock in the morning. So 8 o'clock, registration, 10 o'clock, we begin. And we should conclude early Saturday afternoon, the way I'm kind of anticipating it. Uh, just so you know, we have a closing ceremony, a closing worship service at the end. We will be this time at First Trinity Lutheran Church in Tonawanda. Uh, the last time we had a convention uh, at a church, it was at St. Matthew Lutheran Church in North Tonawanda. Uh, this year, we're going to be at First Trinity, and they've been very, very gracious to us to be our host uh, at their church, and it is plenty 
uh, it's plenty good size uh, to host us as well. Uh, as far as your lodging and housing, just so you know, we're going to put you in hotels. Uh, no, we're not going to set up cots and put you in the church parking lot with the tent over you. No, we're going to get a nice hotel. We're lining up and making final arrangements for that. So that's more. those are more things I'm going to let you know about in, in months to come at the same kind of a gathering. So that that's what it is at this point. Uh, so hopefully it's on your calendar that way as well. Uh, this is our first gathering. Uh, I thought this year it would be very good going into the convention that we have a few of these information meetings uh, on the second Tuesday of every month until June. So you can see what the agenda looks like in the future. There, I may expand a little bit more, change some things around as information comes. But next week, next month, I'm sorry, expect me to talk about the schedule, uh, the elections uh, as we have them. Right now we are working with the nominees list that we have. And we're trying to secure that during this month. So it's set by next month. And the caucuses that will definitely be taking place at the convention. Each and every delegate, every one of you will be involved in a caucus where you break out and you meet with your, your circuit uh, to elect your circuit visitors. So that'll be happening. So that's the schedule looking down the road. This evening, though, I am kind of focusing right on one very important topic that will impact our convention, believe it or not, but also impact the working of our pastors and our congregations. This really doesn't affect, in my opinion, the people in the pews. When we talk about the structure of, of our district and the way we are structured in our synod and circuits, um, you know, it, you know the, the, the person who comes on a Sunday morning uh, the children for Sunday school, they don't, they don't know about this. But at the convention, we need to discuss this and decide arrangements and how it looks and what it's going to be like in the future. And when we talk about realignment, this is nothing new. Uh, I'm not pulling anything over on anybody uh, as my last uh, convention, not doing that. We've always been realigning our circuits, but this particular one is pretty comprehensive as, as you're going to see in a few moments. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm presenting to you the proposed circuits realignment. It's proposed and I'm just explaining it to you. Uh, it's a thumbs up. It's a thumbs down when we come to the convention. And either way, I'm going to have a plan A and a plan B, whichever way you as delegates decide to go with this. So this is sort of the outline for tonight. I'd like to explain to you what, what our circuits are and then why this proposed realignment, what, what's the bottom line for it, what are those facts, uh, a map, we actually have a map of the realignment, I'm going to show you that, and then the downside and the upside of realignment and then the summary and the blessing will let you go. Like I said, you should be done by quarter two or ten two. In case you don't know, uh, the Missouri Senate in your district uh, were organized, were structured in circuits, uh, into circuits. Our congregations are, uh, and they are of two types. Uh, there is what we call the visitation circuit, which is probably the one most of you are familiar with. Certainly our pastors are. And then there are the electoral circuits, which take effect every three years or the fall before a synodical convention. Um, they're important for us to know. Uh, visitation circuits, and let me just explain first before I show you the reconfiguration, they are a cluster of congregations walking together. So it could be five, it could be 15 churches uh, in close proximity to each other. They have a circuit visitor that is a pastor among them who's been elected by those congregations to serve as a, a leader, uh, a person they can go to for direction, guidance, and help as well. Uh, circuit visitors are my helpers. They're, they're my feet. They're my boots on the ground in the circuits and have a big role to play. When your pastor goes to a circuit meeting, this is what he's going to. He's going to his visitation circuit meeting. Uh, and they are also, as I mentioned, established along geographical criteria. 
and more important, most important of all, they're set by the district. Uh, visitation circuits are set by the district. Uh, they are put together by the board of directors, and then we bring those proposals for ratification at the convention, just so you know. On the other hand, so that's visitation circuit, then there are these electoral circuits. And this is, um, these are interesting because they were dealing with numbers and, and these are requirements set by the synod uh, for representation purposes because we're electoral circuits send representatives to the synodical convention. They are visitation circuits that comprise of seven to 20 congregations. You can't have 21, you can't have six. It's got to be somewhere in between those numbers to fit. Plus, it has to have an aggregate communion membership of 1,500 to 10,000 uh, within, within those numbers. Those are both required. Electoral circuits select delegates to the synodical or to the national convention. And just so you know, uh, these will be in use this coming fall because in the fall, our electoral circuits, they designate uh, delegates to go to the convention. The question is, what if the visitation circuit, this one, the one that's very common, what if this circuit doesn't meet the two criteria above? What do you do? Well, either the district board of directors will combine one visitation circuit with another, a whole circuit, you can't go individual congregations, a whole circuit, even if that other visitation circuit meets the criteria. And this has happened, and it does happen. Pittsburgh North, we had Pittsburgh Northwest, Northeast, that happened there. We had to combine them. Or we can make an application to St. Louis to make the visitation circuit an, an electoral circuit by exception, called an exceptional circuit. So you can do this, we, we can manage it, um, but the issue for me is it takes it out of the hands of our, our people and congregations and it puts it someplace else. Uh, let, me, the, let me just go up one more time. The circuit realignment that's being proposed to the convention is designed to make visitation circuits correspond with electoral circuits, a one-to-one. -one. This will avoid any juggling of circuits and or decisions made by St. Louis. So it's your congregations making those decisions. It's your congregations that are electing your people. No one from the outside is, is doing this for you. It's been fine. There's been, in my estimation, no monkey business done over the years, but this puts it truly, I think, in your hands. Well, why the proposed circuits realignment? Why are we doing this? Well, some facts. Times have changed for us. The number of communicants has decreased pretty much across uh, the, all of district. We have lost some congregations, sad to say. Some have closed, some have joined other, other districts for whatever reason. We've gained a congregation or two as well, but there's been lots of changes. Change is the name, right? More congregations today are sharing pastors, and this has been very helpful is what we call partnerships. This has been very helpful. But congregations, and this is kind of a downside, congregations that share a pastor together have one pastor vote and one lay vote at a district convention and at electoral circuit meetings. And that's kind of the tricky, tricky part. What's, what's the bottom of the line? Well, as things stand today, we have 16 visitation circuits currently, of which only three qualify as electoral circuits. This plays into determining our representation to the 2023 Synodical Convention if we don't act on this proposal. Now, okay, or we could do some juggling, like I said before. There would be juggling done by this of the circuits by the district board of directors and we'll make requests made for exceptions if any and those will be left in the hands of st louis 
So if we do nothing, that second paragraph will apply. If we do something, well, the, you're kind of in the driver's seat is the way I'm kind of seeing it. The proposed circuit alignment, it affects every circuit in our district, all 16 of them. However, it doesn't move any congregations from one region to another. So if you're in the Pittsburgh region, you stay in the Pittsburgh region and so on. It'll also reduce the number of visitation circuits from 16 to 11. But it will secure 11 electoral circuits, remember the one-to-one, -one, 11 electoral circuits that are the same as the visitation circuits. So that won't change. We'll still have the 11. Uh, just for your information, at the previous Synodical Convention, we had 13 electoral circuits because we've had, we had two that were exceptional circuits. So the number technically was, was 11 back then, but you know, we made application for, for those exceptional circuits along the way. It also will reduce visitation circuits in each region. And this is the reduction. Buffalo, Pitts, uh, Rochester, and Philadelphia will all lose a circuit. Pittsburgh will lose two circuits in each of those. So every region is affected by this. Okay, so that's kind of the, the up and down of things. Uh, let me now show you a map and it's available to you if you wanna look further. So I'm gonna open up a screen. Hopefully you'll see that. Uh, it says Eastern District. This is the front page of our website. If you've not been there, take a look sometime. This has been redesigned this year www.lcmsed.org, lcmsed for Eastern District.org. And this is what you'll find. Um, I'm, I'm going to get to the map in a moment. But of interest to you would be this tab to the extreme right. Let me just open this for a moment. This is the convention material as it'll appear. When, when the workbook appears, you, you'll be able to find it and download it right here on this site and other materials that will come your way. Uh, you can see the calendar of some important events that are happening. You can see tonight's Zoom is listed here, a 50 minute Zoom, first of four. And a little further down, if you didn't see this, here are some of the materials for tonight that may be handy for you if you want to download those or, or print them up, uh, the, the current and the proposed uh, alignments that we now have, and tonight's PowerPoint uh, for you. We're also going to post the recording of this Zoom, so you can, you can look at it, and we're going to spread the word too, because there are a lot of people who aren't with us tonight who may want to hear about this as well. So, so that's there for you, and other materials along the way, you can see, you can see those. You can do that yourself. Now, the map that I'm referring to, you go to the tab called About Us, the first button down, Who We Are. You click and obviously it opens. You scroll down to Congregational Locator Map. And this, this is really handy because you can work it and manipulate it. And when you click it on, you will see a map of the Eastern District and the dots representing where our congregations are. There is, I'll point it out to you at the start, there is one mistake I noticed, and I don't know if you can see my hand rotating, but this is Albion right on the shore of Lake Erie or near, that congregation is no longer with us. So you can, we can just kind of erase that. But this is a map of what the reconfiguration, the proposed reconfiguration uh, will look like. If you go to the lower right, you have Philadelphia, and that's in the green. Uh, there's about, I think there are five congregations in Philadelphia. Five does not equal seven. So that is not an electoral circuit. And Philadelphia knows that because we've had to work this for the past couple of conventions. Then you have to the north, 
you have the Susquehanna Circuit in the blue. So these are all those congregations over here. This is Faith Herndon um, and Faith Easton and other churches. What's going to happen with the reconfiguration is that Philadelphia and the Susquehanna Circuit will become one circuit, one very large circuit, half of the state of Pennsylvania, the eastern half, uh, one circuit. But we left the colors because the option could be that these two areas could still retain their identity and the uh, circuit visitor could say, if let's say the circuit visitor is up in Scranton, he could say to a pastor in Philadelphia, I want you to be my representative in Philadelphia and visit those churches and support them as, as need be. And I'll, and I'll take these up here. However, once in a, I, I am the circuit visitor and I, I have all those rights and those responsibilities as a circuit visitor. And that needs to be understood with the district president. So that's a thought, and we'll talk more about that later, but all one circuit right there. Remember I said each region is losing a circuit. This will lose one. So you have one circuit for Philadelphia. To the north, this kind of greenish color, that's green to me. Uh, this is reconfigured because it begins, as you can see, right in Rochester and goes all the way down to Wellsboro, Pennsylvania which is currently part of this circuit. There's nothing uh, different about that. And over to Binghamton, up 81 to about the 90 and over again. This will become Rochester South. Rochester South. Rochester East is this color here. Oh, I can't tell you what color that is. I, I you know, it looks kind of pink. I'll say that. But again, it starts in Rochester. And it goes all along the I-90, pretty much, to Rome and Utica and, Can uh, what is this? Not Canandaigua. Um, oh, let's see. We have Grace and we have Redeemer there. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> just lost my mind right there. Canastana. And then along the way. I'm sorry. Say that again. Canastona. Canastona. Thank you. So the, this here is all one circuit again, okay? That's a good number. And then finally, this congregation here in Cohocton was moved over. A, 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 currently, it's, it's in the central New York South Circuit, but we need to move it over to Rochester West because this circuit has currently only six congregations, and it's too bad because Hope Rochester's there and very sizable congregation. And it would be a shame to kind of lose that as a visitation circuit and as an electoral circuit. So I'm, move, I'm moving this over here. And now we have the seven congregations as is required. You move to Buffalo. And again, you have two circuits that are combined in the, in the Southern region of Buffalo. This is the Cattaraugus, Cattaraugus circuit. And there are five congregations there at this point, and it's combining with the Lake Shore Circuit, which which goes to northeast Pennsylvania and up the shoreline all the way to Angola and Faith Eden and and places like that. Um, so all one circuit. This is fairly large uh, area as well, not as large as the Philadelphia, but it's difficult to get around here. Um, I mean, the, main, the only main highway is 86, but anyway, that's where it goes. You go to the north, this would be the Lakeshore Cattaraugus Circuit. That's all arbitrary going into the convention. If you all want to change the name of your circuits, I would recommend it. But you go to the north and the lighter green, this is Buffalo South. And we moved some churches around there. Um, one in particular was La Santa Cruz our Hispanic speaking ministry that was in Buffalo North. And well, now they have an address in South Buffalo. So and that worked out very nicely uh, because even though you can see, and I, let me enlarge that so you can see a little bit clearer. 
you can see there's more than seven churches. Yet here's the thing. When you have two congregations that are sharing a pastor, that counts as one. Um, you know, that's just the way it is. That's how Synod defines it. And we have two of those situations in Buffalo South. So you can do the math. You can see right now, if you do the subtraction and so on, there should be, I think, seven or eight churches total, even though there's like 10 of them. Um, so let me zoom back out. So that's Buffalo South. Buffalo North would be the purple, it looks to me. And First Trinity Tonawanda is being moved back. Yeah, it's right currently, it's in Niagara West. It's going to move back to, to Buffalo North. Batavia, which is also in Buffalo North, is moving up to Niagara. Uh, and those are, are some of the significant changes that we have. So that forms a, a, a good number. And then we have this incredible cluster of congregations in North Tonawanda and also one in Tonawanda, Emmanuel. And we're going to form just that cluster into a circuit easily fits that that definition. So that that's what we're calling, for sake of a better word, Niagara South. And then finally, we have the Niagara Circuit, just called it Niagara. It's neither west nor east, it's both. <laughs> it goes from Niagara Falls all the way to Batavia, up to Medina, Middleport, and, and other places like that. And so a lot of churches here, but the numbers are, are smaller and the congregations, I think this is the one area that it has most of the sharing of pastors in this area here, but it works out well. And finally, we have the Pittsburgh region. Currently, Pittsburgh has four circuits, and it's going to go down to two. Uh, very simple. I mean, somebody asked me once, why, why are we going to two? Why not three? Remember, I said you have to have 1,500 communicants in a circuit. You easily have enough congregations for three circuits. There's easily 21 churches there, or probably plus. But the, the whole region of Pittsburgh, this whole region has 4,200 communicants. So if you do the math, it, it just doesn't fit uh, one way or the other. Uh, 15 times 3, of course, is 45. You can't do it with 42. So we opted to go with the two circuits. Again, this is a stretch. Uh, for the circuit visitor, uh, I realize uh, these are our two churches in Maryland. Uh, over here, we have uh, Trinity Fairhope. Uh, we have St. Peter and Paul. And then you know, this pile, it's a pile up, right, <laughs> of congregation. I mean that in a good way. But you can see all these red churches will be Pittsburgh South. And to the north would be the orange and that that is fairly extensive too it goes all the way from state college all the way to the ohio border this church is not with us any longer then you have punxsutawney um, munson uh, over here this would be st luke cabot just to show you a few uh, so that that's kind of how those look now so that that's the map if if you want to play with it sometime you can actually point your pointer to one of those dots. And when you click it, you'll get the name of the church and its address and phone number, which is quite handy, really. Here's another Calvary Lutheran over here, St. Peter and Paul, Central City, and so on. Very, very uh, nice tool that was developed by Rick Porter in our office, and we use that quite extensively. So that's what it looks like. You have the one circuit here, you have two, three here, you have, I think it's five here, and you have two here for the Eastern District. Now, if, if you want to know where your congregation is now, let me bring up two files for you. If you haven't seen this, this is available on the website, on the convention page under tonight's discussion. Uh, this is listing the current arrangement that we have 
by by circuits here. You know, there's 16 of them. Last I counted, I hope there are 16. Um, and here we have we have them lined up according to lay representation to the board of directors. So the board of directors has eight lay representatives throughout the district, and we we are two per region. And we arrange that according. We try to do the best we could to keep it fairly equal uh, in the in the regions, the numbers, as you can see on the right column. It tells you the number of congregations in each and which circuit. So if you want to know which delegate number is yours, um, all you do need to do is let's say take a look at Trinity Medina. Trinity Medina is Niagara East. So then you go over here, you look for Niagara East, and you can see it right here. Niagara East is section number two, has 19 congregations. And at our 2018 convention, it has 68, 69 communicants in that region, in that whole region or that section. So that's kind of how that works. If you want to find out where, you're, where the proposal would place you, you go to this one that says proposed and clearly watermarked on the page. You can see it. It's proposed uh, for your vote. And you can see there the number of circuits are, are fewer, but more extensive. Look at the number of congregations that fit. They're all, they're all under 20, so we're good. And, and if once over a smidge, really two equals one in some situations. So we understood that. And again, you can find out about Trinity. Where's Trinity Medina? Let me just take a look at that since we looked at that before. And that would be the um, Niagara region. Here we go. Trinity Medina is up here. It's under Niagara. So then you switch over here and here's Niagara. Again, you're still in your, your lay director is in the second region. This is now the number of communicants in that region congregations and total would be the two the two circuits that make up uh, this one lay delegate. So 5106 is that. So that that's how it looks if you want to see where where the proposal is gonna gonna change and, and put you. There, there's a few, only only a few that we've noticed. Um, one is Saint, uh, the one that I could think of offhand. Oh, there's two. Uh, there's first Trinity Tonawanda, and then there's also St. John Millvale in Pittsburgh. Those two are not only switching circuits, but those two churches are switching lay delegate, if you follow me. So currently, let me first Trinity is part of Niagara West currently. Now, this is the, this is the current. I'm looking at the. This is a proposed. Uh, is part of Niagara West, that, and their lay delegate is the is the second lay delegate. Happens to be Carl Fredhold. Well, with this is going to happen, but with if this uh, is approved, First Trinity will go to Buffalo North, and Buffalo North, as you can see is lay director number one. Now that may mean nothing to you, but but it does to to the nominees and in in it may to those congregations and we're making every effort before the convention to talk to to those nominees to see if they have any objections uh, to their nomination and if they would let their nomination stand if they were elected to the other circuit where they or to the other section where they continue to serve those kind of things that we need to do. So things to catch that we catch along the way. Let me go back to the PowerPoint as we were. I don't know how we lost where I was, but this is what happens sometimes. Let me go down. Okay. So you saw the map, uh, and at this point, you know, I'm, I'm kind of beginning to close it up. 
So if you have any questions, you might want to put it in the chat or you can wait to wait until after we're done. So like any change, like any realignment, there's always a downside and an upside to anything. And I, you know, it's it's good to kind of be honest about that, put that on the table. And there may be some things that I haven't thought about, but these were some that came to my mind along the way. Uh, the first is the obvious one. Some circuits cover a very large territory. And as I mentioned, it's very difficult for the circuit visitor to connect with all his congregations and his workers uh, to be truly a visiting a circuit visitor, right? This is hard to do that. So that that's going to need to be figured out uh, along the way. Uh, but truly, it's no different than other parts of the synod. Uh, there, when I when my first church was in Canada, and I had heard about circuits out west in Western Canada, the Prairie States, and all that, those circuits were so big uh, that when they had a circuit meeting, it would take days. It would they would take a day to drive. They would be together for two days, and then we'd come back and drive back for a day. It just it was just so extensive out there. Now, it's not like that, and I know we're to the east, but, you know, our numbers are, are spreading out a little bit, so we need to make adjustments, um, and, and that's, uh, it's, it's what it is. Uh, a circuit visitor, of course, as I mentioned, with DP's approval can appoint a delegate uh, from another part of the circuit to help as well. So that, that would be a possible solution along the way. What a relationship and friendship ties, and, the, and there are. I mean, there are congregations and pastors that have met in, in their visitation circuits that they've met there for years, for a very, very long time. And, and those, those presumably are going to be broken up, right? Uh, and, and that would be unfortunate. They get severed because of the move. Well, you know, the truth is uh, the circuit visitor is the circuit visitor, and he has responsibilities to his circuit, to the congregations and the workers, and they need to maintain that relationship with him too. So that doesn't go away. However, there is nothing saying congregations of workers may not meet or not maintain old relationships and friendships. You can still you can still do those things, I believe, uh, along the way. But um, the truth is, we still would like to see the pastors meet with their prescribed uh, circuits. They can still go back to the old circuit and visit them once in a while, but we'd really like to see them meet with the new ones as well. What are the numbers continue to change? Uh, they will, <laughs> they always do. Like I said, we've, we've changed circuits uh, ever since I've been a district president and before. Some circuits do have robust numbers and that's gonna satisfy the electoral circuits criteria conceivably for some time to come. Uh, some numbers are tight. Some of them are uh, in the there's we have one that's in the upper 1500s, like 1578. Uh, that's tight. Uh, I think you're we're good for at least another convention after this one, but who knows? Who knows? Numbers are bound to change, but hopefully for the better. Either way, your board of directors as well as the district convention can take appropriate action in the future. It, is it probably going to happen? Uh, but remember, this proposal allows you to set your own definition. The decision of your representative circuit is set by you and not by the board of directors or by synod. And I think that that's, that's the upshot of it. So those are, that's the downside and the upside. Today, just in summary, we have 16 visitation circuits of which only three qualify as electoral circuits. There would need to be some juggling of the 13 non-qualifying circuits to meet the criteria as electoral circuits. Without a circuit's realignment by our convention, your board of directors or St. Louis will decide your electoral circuit for you, and that will happen if, if this thing goes down. The proposal, if approved, is to repeat. It's going to reduce the number of visitation circuits from 16 to 11, and the proposal will also secure 11 electoral circuits and that will not be changed so with that this uh this concludes our time together as i promised uh, it's before 50 minutes uh, that's unusual for me to be brief so i'm going to stay on after uh, i send you with the blessing if you'd like to stay on i see we have one question in the chat uh, i'll answer that and any other questions you can you can unmute yourself 
at that time and we can talk. So, here, and here is the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you next month, same day next month, same time. God bless. Okay, Lyle, I'm going to turn the share off. There we go. I'll turn it on if we need to answer some questions. Um, I see one in the chat. Oh, yeah, somebody just mentioned it was Canastota. That's when I had that brain freeze. Terrible thing. So you feel free to unmute if you have any questions. Now's the time to ask. Mr. Wisher? Yes, go ahead. Um, we we are uh, sharing uh, Pastor Kruger as just an interim pastor with Faith. And my question is, does that mean that we can only have one delegate between Faith and Emmanuel? That's correct. <laughs> Oops, I'm hearing some feedback. That is correct, uh, because your congregations are mutually calling a pastor, and you have Pastor Kruger, who is serving both of your churches. So Faith in Alma and Emmanuel East Aurora has one delegate and one pastor delegate. I see. Okay, thank you. But in that case, in cases of these partnerships, we would really want to have the alternate come, and we will pay the way for the alternate to be beyond the convention floor. They can't vote, but they can participate, uh, come to the banquet, share in all the things of the, of the convention. I see. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chris? Yes. Is, is that true uh, in the like fact- Pastor, This sounds like Pastor Canup. It, it is. Mm -hmm. is, is that still the case since that they're not really partner congregations? Uh, Pastor Kruger is serving a, a vacancy. Yes, it's true. And, and yes, it holds. Even though it's just a, a temporary vacancy. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Thank you. President Wisher, this is Dan Driscoll from Cabot. Um, yes. Thank you for your presentation tonight. Um, very insightful. Uh, my question doesn't necessarily go for the district convention because it seems like the information that you're presenting to us is based on the requirement of Synod. And I was wondering if Synod needs to change their criteria so it wouldn't cause so much upheaval in the districts. And I, well, think, that would go, I would think that would be for the Council of Presidents to, to bring to, uh, I guess, the table. Well, yes, it could, but the, we, don't, we don't have really that line of work to do. Uh, what applies for the, for the Synod also applies for the district. Um, representation at the convention is the same. So we have to kind of be consistent with that through the whole system. And this can change, and there's been some discussion about it, because uh, as you can see, our congregations are spreading out. They're getting larger for our, our electoral circuits. And we're not the only district that's experiencing this. Um, and we're not the only district that's doing realignment. So where this goes is it can come from a board in St. Louis brought to the Synodical Convention, or it can come as a memorial or a resolution from a congregation saying to Synod in convention, hey, we need to look at this. We need to change the handbook. So a change can happen, and I think it likely will, because I've heard whispers to that effect, but you know, somebody has to chisel it out and word it up properly so that the convention can handle it. Chris, this is Lyle. There is a question in the chat, but uh, the, the individual who submitted that question misunderstood your information, thought there were only three electoral circuits previously, and now we were going to 11. 
did not understand that you we were going from 16 or is it 16 or 19 right now to 11 we have we have, we have 16 visitation going to 11 we had we had in at the 2018 no the 20 what was the last convention synodical convention 2019 was it 2019 convention we had we have 13 electoral circuits now today with the criteria if you look at the visitation circuits and the numbers only three of them would qualify as electoral circuits so we'd have to do some juggling but either way we are decreasing in our number not yes, increasing that's correct yep and remember the reasons why right you know what's going on times have changed for us and they've changed for all of our synods so we're again we're not the only ones we just have to make the adjustment So there's, I see a question about how delegates to the Synod Convention are chosen. So they are chosen at the, when the electoral circuits meet this fall. They will meet this fall. The congregations in the electoral circuit gather. They can Zoom together or be in person. Congregations send the names of nominees to the circuit to the visit to the electoral circuit meeting um, so this congregation might nominate this person this one might nominate that one and and then the the electoral circuit first votes on the pastor delegate so of all the pastors who are in the area and then they vote on on who's going to be the lay delegate uh, and only one, and then they it cannot be the same congregation as the pastoral delegate. And next, they vote on the pastor alternate to go, and it cannot be on any of those first two congregations. So you're talking a, a third different congregation. And finally, the lay alternate is is elected as well. And again, it has to be from a different congregation than the other three. So, and it's very important as a district president very important to get those alternates in there uh, you know i've had circuits that have said well we're not you know we, we're not, not going to send anybody as an alternate trust me it's happened where the delegate wasn't able to go to the convention consequently that circuit's not represented with a lay or a pastoral delegate if there's no alternate and uh, the district president can't name it it's just if it's not there he's not there so yeah, if, if you're going to be going to those electoral meetings, those electoral circuit meetings, make make sure that there are alternates that are elected as well. And one last thing about being a delegate to the Senate convention, your way is paid. You know, the, the air flight, the travel, the rooming, the, the meals, you're given a stipend. And it's a very, very nice event. I, I would highly recommend it. I think everyone should experience it at least once in their life. It's really kind of wonderful to see nearly 1,200 or 1,400 delegates on a convention floor. It's mammoth. <laughs> it's mammoth. Well, very good. I, it's, it appears that all the questions are answered. Uh, I just have one more look I should have seen up here. Okay, yeah, I answered that question about the electoral circuits and numbers. Well, anything else that you know of? Nothing else I'm aware of. Okay, my good friends, God bless. Have a great evening. Thank you very much for your time. Call me if you have any questions that you didn't want to raise tonight along the way. Feel free to do that, and I'll send you to Lyle. No, no, I'll answer your question. <laughs> God bless. Take care.